All right, so we are going to look at a two-object, one-dimensional motion, so two interacting objects problem um, and the process that we go through to do that and the, some practice. So your question reads, a boat at rest is passed by another boat moving at a constant speed of five meters per second. Two seconds after the boat is passed, it begins to accelerate at 2.1 meters per second squared. How long does it take for the boat to catch up? So the second boat to catch up to the first boat. All right, so if we think about our process of kinematics and two-dimensional motion, or uh, sorry, at two-object motion, we want to first identify what do we care about, when does our motion start, and when does it end? So the objects that we care about in this particular problem are the boats and there's two of them so when we think about the objects in the motion it's there's two objects in this case so that sort of clues us into having to think about how those two objects might be interacting and what do we care about now we could care about when boat A passes boat B we could care about when boat B starts to accelerate we get to define what we care about and that's going to set the framework for our problem and Sometimes there's better strategies, but there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. And so how you approach this problem may look a little differently than how I'm approaching it because you've chosen to identify your motion differently. So you always want to make sure you're very conscious of that, that step. So I'm going to say let's look at the process of when the first boat, which I'm going to call boat A, passes boat B. All right. And when do they end? When the two boats meet. And in both, both approaches to the problem, the final is probably going to be the same. All right, so given my initial um, framing of the problem, we're going to draw a picture that represents that framing. So here is, let's say, boat B sitting there at rest. Then here's boat A moving. And I'm going to be interested in when boat A passes boat B. So there is my picture, and I have to identify my origin. So we're just going to identify the origin at the point boat B is when boat A passes it. All right. So picture, identified origin. I'm going to say that the positive direction is to the right by convention. We, I typically use convention. Okay. So let's we are interested in when these two boats meet, so let's make our list for both boat A and boat, and boat B. So we have initial position of A, final position of A, initial velocity of A, final velocity of A, acceleration of A, time of A. So these are all my players of motion for boat A. Initial for B, final for B, V initial, boat B, V final for boat B, acceleration for boat B, and time for boat B. All right. So when boat A passes boat B, what is its initial position? Well, it's at that origin at zero meters. I don't know where the final position is. The initial velocity of boat A, as it passes boat B, we are told is five meters per second. We're said that it travels at a constant rate, so there is no acceleration, and therefore my initial and final velocity must be the same. No acceleration, constant velocity. And we don't know the time. We're not sure how long it takes for boat B to catch up to boat A. Now, boat B, where is boat B when boat A passes boat B? Well, it too is at that origin. We don't know where it is when the two boats meet. We do know it's at rest when boat A passes boat B. We do not know the final velocity. We are told that the boat is going to accelerate at 2.1 meters per second squared, but we don't know the time. All right, now we need to look at how are these two objects related to one another? Well, we do know that the two boats are gonna meet so the final position of A is going to equal the final position of B. How else are they related? Well, we know their times are related in some way. They're not equal. We're told that boat B 
it starts to accelerate two seconds after boat A passes it. So that means that given our definition of the time, the initial condition when boat A passes boat B to the final when they are meeting, boat A has actually moved two seconds longer. So the time of A is equal to the time of B plus two seconds. So I want you to think about that just for a minute. The time of A is longer than the time of B to actually physically do the motion. So B's motion of accelerating to catch up to boat A takes two seconds less time than when boat A crossed paths with boat B. So two seconds later, boat A travels two seconds further, and then boat B starts. And tr at that point, they travel the same amount of time. So boat B has traveled two seconds less. Boat A is boat B's time plus two seconds. Okay? So this is the same as boat A minus two seconds is going to equal boat B. These equations are equivalent, but maybe the framing can be thought. Boat A travels, and then boat B travels two seconds less. So how you visualize that equation may look slightly different. Now, what are we interested in solving for? Well, we are interested in answering the question, how long does it take for the boat to catch up? So we're interested in the time. How long for boat B to catch up? That's boat B's time. So we're interested in the time of boat B. Okay, that's our variable of interest. How long does it take for boat B to catch up to boat A? All right, so let's go after that. So I have initial in, in I have initial position, I have initial velocity, and I have an acceleration. So I'm drawn to this equation. Okay. So x final, well, I don't know what it is. That's x final of b is equal to x initial, which is zero, plus v initial, zero, times the time of b, which is what I'm interested in, plus one half the acceleration. 2.1 times the time of B squared. All right. Well, I want time of B. In order for me to get that, I need, I need X final of B. I'm not going to get that from this list, but I recognize that X final of A and X final of B are related. So maybe I can utilize that information to get what I need. So let's go after X final of A. Well, I'm going to utilize the same equation for x final of a. So x final of a, well, I don't know what that is, is going to be equal to 0 plus v initial times the time of a, which I don't know, plus 1 half 0 times the time of a squared. Well, that goes away. That helps me out a little bit. And we have x final of a is equal 5 times the time of A. Now we know that X final of A equals X final of B. So these two equations are equivalent. They're equal to one another. So I'm going to write that in first. And I'll go back to my blue. So I have 5. Oh, I'll use a different color. I have 5 times the time of A is equal to 1 half 2.1 times the time of b squared. All right, still two unknown variables, so I can't solve it yet, but I recognize that the time of a is related to the time of b, and I want the time of b. So I'm going to utilize this idea. So 5, put that in there, the time of b plus 2 is equal to 1 half, 2.1, times the time of b squared. And now I have my variable of interest that I want, that I went after originally, that I can solve for. So I end up with 5 times the time of b plus 10 is equal to 1 half of 2.1 is 1.05 times the time of b squared. Oh, this is going to look a little bit like 
an equation that we are having to solve for our quadratic. So let's bring the time of b squared over 1.05 time of b squared plus 5 times the time of b plus 10 is equal to 0. Now, that is our quadratic equation. And that quadratic equation is going to have two solutions to it. Now, those two solutions, let's just do the math for us. Remember, it's the opposite of b. So our time of b is going to be the opposite of b minus 5 plus or minus the square root b squared, 25 squared, minus 4 times a, negative 1.05, times c, which is 10, all over 2 times negative 1.05. All right, so pull out our calculators. And we have minus 5. I like to do things in steps. So 25 squared, which is 625. Those are going to cancel. No, minus times minus is going to be a plus. 4 times 1.05 times 10, 42, all over negative, and that's going to be my 2.1, all over negative 2.1. So 625, square root of that, so square root of that, negative 5 plus or minus 25.8263, and I carry a lot of significant figures in my initial calculations. Actually, normally I would just do it all in one step so that the rounding doesn't come into play. But to reduce the rounding coming into play, we can just keep a lot, and then we round at the end. Minus 5 plus or minus that over negative 2.1. So, negative 5 plus 25 Point eight two six three four three one four divided by negative two point one gives me negative nine point nine is one solution. My other solution negative five minus twenty five point eight two six three four three one four divided by negative 2.1, negative, I think I made a mistake here, point six eight. hmm, I definitely made a calculation error. So, one, because I have my, my times here. So let me recalculate, because I think I made a calculation error. So opposite of b minus 5, plus or minus. Well, there we go. I squared my, that's where we've made our mistake. I wish I would have caught that a little bit earlier, but no big deal. The reason is these numbers do not, oh, this would have been positive. But that number doesn't look right to me, and it isn't right. So why doesn't it look like? That seems like an awful lot amount of time, given the velocity of the two boats. So where did I make my mistake? Well, I, in my head, already squared my b squared. So I put b squared in, and then I squared it again. So here is my mistake in the calculation. So we are going to fix that. This is a very good example. I don't ever do these things on purpose, but it's a great example of evaluating your work. I looked at that number and went, wait a second, that doesn't even make sense. It's a little higher than I would expect. Always evaluate that work at the end. So, and we have 25 plus 42. So I bet we're gonna get something a little bit more reasonable if we do it that way. So 25 plus 42. And the square root of that gives us 8. So we have negative 5 plus or minus 8.18535 all over negative 2.1. So negative 5 plus 8.18535 divided by negative 2.1 
gives us time of B, negative 1.52 seconds. Well, there's always two solutions, the other one. So we have negative 5 minus 8.18535 divided by negative 2.1, and I get 6.28 seconds. So those are my two solutions, much more reasonable. Now, which one is it? Well, it's really easy to figure out which is the two solutions when we're dealing with time, and one of them is negative. So given the motion that we've described, I can't have a negative time, and it really doesn't make sense to have a negative time. We can do a relative time being negative, like I started before you in the negative world if you start at zero. But for the most part, we always can eliminate that negative value, especially given how we've defined the motion. So the time it takes for B to catch up is 6.28. All right, a little bobble in there with my quick math in my head. So that was not good. Always good to reevaluate at the end. This does seem a lot more reasonable, so I feel good about that number. Couple of things. Again, there's a different approach. If we had done the approach of when boat B started, we would have looked at this slightly differently. We wouldn't have known, for example, where boat A started in that case because it would have already traveled past. That might lead you to think, wait a minute, I could also do this in two phases. I could do it in the phase where where's boat A when boat B starts and do a, a one-dimensional, one-object problem in that phase for boat A and then start a second problem where the two objects are interacting and boat A is further ahead. So both, all three, thinking about all three are appropriate um, and, a, and a, certainly a great way to do it. The approach I like to take is to try to do it all in one step because I've defined the motion to be able to do that. But recognizing the key feature in any two object problem is recognizing those relationships. All right, and always evaluating. All right, good job.